with me today is neil nagvekar young writer author uh, i mean not author yet ghost writer yeah ghost writer ghost writer uh, neil neil uh, you were telling me the story of this fascinating book which you just completed yeah there are others in the pipeline which we cannot talk about but who killed judge loya yeah so so first a little bit a uh, summary of the topic and then uh, the challenges of writing it so the book uh, the book is authored by this uh, nationally accredited journalist named niranjan takle and he's been he's been doing great work for many years and uh, in 2016 in the middle of 2016 he was in pune on a random assignment and he met the niece of judge loya hmm. judge loya was a was a judge a cbi special court judge he was presiding over a murder trial in which the prime accused was amit shah and judge loya died in december 2014 and judge loya's niece told the journalist that she thinks that the judge was murdered and this guy because he is such a renowned journalist he knew that he can't just print a story like this ha uh, judge loya's niece said something something he realized that he needs to have three four witness he has to have three four sources the narrative has to be corroborated yeah. the what do you call it there has to be real and demonstrative evidence if it shows up in court so he want he went on a whole hunt to find uh medical documents in nagpur of judge loya's records post mortem records which were hidden by uh elements uh by very uh, yeah elements and the whole book is a journey about you just start you just hear some hearsay account of something a mm. national level conspiracy and a whole book is you spend it by making it real so that build up uh it's really the journalist story uh, i was just happy to be writing it but uh it was really great because it we all know what's happening in india right now we all have our opinions about it but i feel like there are so many facts that get lost in the wayside that you find out in this book for what ex- sorry sorry what were the challenges uh, in you know you, for example you can you can can you first maybe yeah so for example he was talking to he wanted to talk to judge loya's father and judge loya's father was staying at gatigaon which is near latur in interior maharashtra and uh, he randomly connected with the journalist and said i'd like to talk completely off the record and that was the day demonetization happened so oh. they didn't have cash he had to figure out how to get 5000 rupees to book a taxi and take that taxi to osmanabad and then to latur and to gatega so he went there he went to his completely desolate uh, abandoned uh, interior maharashtra village he went to the house uh, judge loya's father harkishan ji entered or uh, received him and within 5 minutes harkishan ji gets a call from the local police and the local police is asking uh, कौन आए दे आर आस्किंग इन मराठी हु हैव यू लेट इन साइड व्हाट बिजनेस डज ही हैव विद यू एंड द जर्नलिस्ट निरंजन रियलाइजेस दैट देयर फैमिली इज अंडर सर्वेलेंस प्रीटी मच सिंस जज लोया डाइड सो व्हेन एनीवन एंटर्स दे डू पूछताछ एंड दे फाइंड आउट सो ही टोल्ड द कॉप ने वो दोस्त था चाय के लिए बुलाया एंड ऑल एंड ही स्पोक टू द जर्नलिस्ट फॉर 3 सॉलिड आवर्स he showed him the shirt that judge loya was wearing the day he died and he showed that it still had dry blood stains on it and he said a lot of things uh, it's all in in the book and right after this uh, it's all off the record he says you come to me when you have evidence then i'll tell you on the record so the journalist said fine and as he was leaving gatigao he got a call from his friend from the intelligence bureau and immediately the first question this ib guy asks is to gatigao madhe kay karto hai you know what are you doing in gatigao and niranj says how do you know i am in gatigao la humko sab pata hai so he says uh, he says i am covering stories of uh, demonetization in rural economy how it's impacting rural economy and this ibk says kuch bhi don't lie to me i know why you're over there when you come to mumbai you have to meet me i need to talk to you about something important and he hangs up the call the journalist gets spooked and he realizes that his phone's battery is draining in 10 minutes his mails are being read when he open signal you know the chats are being read so he he realizes his phone is tapped and his phone is tapped because he spoke to someone who was under surveillance yeah. therefore he came under surveillance mm. as a fact like this is not very publicly known you know very publicly acknowledged the level of which 
people will go to hide the truth from there he was going with his cameraman and the guy they were ri- renting the car with back home they were supposed to go from latul to pune and they were chased by eight people on the way back wow. eight people had hockey sticks and there's a car car chase sequence on the national highway they are riding fast these people are riding behind them this guy has a expandable button in hand they are taking out the jack and tommy to intimidate the guys back so he goes to mumbai he meets the ib guy at kyani is very famous iranian cafe yeah. in mumbai and uh, the ib guy tells him you are doing adventures now but some adventures can be very risky and he says i am not doing adventures this is not mountain climbing you know and besides this is my duty as a journalist to find out the truth so the ib guy tells him you have been contacting people under surveillance that is i now you are also under surveillance and the journalist says i have to go to nagpur i have to find the post mortem the histopathology report the forensic report which will confirm if there is any foul play right now the running story is that jazlia died of a heart attack a coronary artery insufficiency but he has heard stories whether judge's head was bruised there was blood on his body he may have been poisoned and the histopathology reports all these medical reports will say the truth because when you record how a person if you do a post mortem you keep the viscera organs also in the in the fridges and all so that no one can contest how they died so the reports are have to have the truth they have to reflect what the organs say but he has to go do this at nagpur which is the home of the rss and people don't know why he's snooping around he has to be very clever and the ib person tells him that uh, you know you have to ensure that you have real and duplicate you have duplicates of all your documents in five six places you have to ensure that you change your mode of transport every 1 km you have to ensure that your phone is switched off you never follow a set pattern never always leave the house at 7 am and reach back at 11 so then there are two complete chapters in nagpur where yeah. he is there and he is finding out what happened really he went to nagpur on the con- on the he had a cover story to go to nagpur he couldn't tell uh people over there that he's going to nagpur to find out why jazlu had died because that's suicide yeah so he went under the cover story that the constitution of india says that uh obc students sc st obc students dalits who work in uh, md who do md in hospitals they are required to have a free ship by the government okay every month you are supposed to get some 70 grand per month if you are from sc st obc and since the bjp took over that grant stopped coming so that was his pretext for going and mm. his plan was he'll go and he'll talk to gmc students about this ki are tum logo ko paisa nahi mil raha what a shame so terrible i'll write this story for you and all but he'll also ask them questions about oh you are an md student right was there any high 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 level judge vip judge member who had died and someone some of your friends had to do post mortem so that was the real investigation he was doing so many me he was doing this free ship story while he was covering this in nagpur he used to get intimidated almost every day by people on bikes on pulsar bikes and they used to stop and they used to tell him to kon hai to kashalalas somehow they got wind that this guy is doing something so there is a scene in the book where one day uh, he is going in a rickshaw and a guy on a bike stops and he tells him to come out and he's like where are you going and by this point niranjan sir he is frustrated he sits on his bike and mere ghar ja raha take me to your house <laughs> and uh, this guy is not expecting what's happening so like get off get off the bike start moving the bike get off the bike man and he gets off and he says tujhe baad mein dekh lunga he goes to the canteen he's talking to uh, one of the students there and he's talking to the student and these two three people show up the bike guy who was intimidating him shows up with two three friends of his and this time they start asking the student who's this guy so the student says he is a journal what's his name niranjan takle why is he here so he said ki uh, we are not getting money free ship uh, we are supposed to get money every month we are not getting money mm-hmm. he is doing a story on that so the the guy is who was supposed to intimidate to him ask uh, you are not getting money why he said uh, we should be getting money we are not getting money and their questions change from basically the questions change from being intimidating to actually being curious about this is a very serious issue we should be covering this issue because even the people sent to intimidate niranjan are yeah. from scst obcs so they found a kindred spirit 
in the same problems but writing writing this neil was it a big challenge to put such a serious story into into a book which would catch the readers attention uh yeah it was on one on one level we were not worried about get it getting attention because it was a very famous story yeah. of four five months yeah. it was in the top indian news cycle mate was every, every week it was there and you all came out on time uh so the the story that he published was in 2017 yeah the then another follow up sort of petition began pil storm began after that that ended in uh, april 2018 and i started writing the book with uh, niranjan sir in december 2020 and it came out in may 2022 so it's sort of 4 5 years after the whole storm ended yeah but it has so many facts that the caravan didn't publish I see. for journalistic integrity yeah yeah but uh, so many facts that were not published and just to hear all that because when i used to speak to this journalist he's so learned he can tell you things about gokhale about gandhi about nehru about savarkar about anyone that you know you will find only in the most obscure book that that's credible so he used to tell me a lot of things and i used to have in my i used to know in my head that this will be the chronological order what it will go so whenever he told me things i wrote them by date and then i placed them okay this sound like a chapter 3 thing this sound like a chapter 7 thing this sound like a chapter 1 thing uh, and while writing i realized it's not only about judge loya it's about indian newsrooms It's about how Dalits are treated in India. It's about judicial system. It's about politicians. So, I realized the book needs to have setups and payoff. The first chapter is a setup. A judge was murdered, possibly by a really, really important person in India today. Really powerful person in India today. So it sets up that. The second chapter sets up a problem. The judiciary in India is bad. Whole history is shown of why the court, why the case came to court in first place. Who was Shorabuddin Sheikh, who was Tulsi Ram Prajapati, behind which all this happened. It sets up a problem that the courts are bad in India. The third chapter sets up another problem: the newsrooms are bad. The fourth chapter sets up another problem: the primary source will not talk. So those were the setups, and then we had payoffs. Chapter nine was the payoff for chapter three. Chapter eleven was the payoff for chapter two. One prop, one chapter said the courts are bad. Another chapter said this is how you get your uh get what you want from the courts so that way i am i am decent at doing story structure uh i knew it was not only a story about judge loya not only about niranjan takle it was about all the people he met so i ensured that they were introduced in a certain way and that the stories concluded in a certain way that resonated with young india resonated with so many things that are happening in our country right now Very interesting. Very interesting. Where where is the book available and what's its name again? Uh, the book is called Who Killed Judge Loya. It's available in English, in Marathi. Currently being translated in Bengali. It's on Amazon. Amazon dot in. Uh, and it's also on Flipkart. But it was a bestseller on Flipkart. Wow. And now it's on Amazon. Now it's doing decently. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, and all the best. All the best with your work. You're, You're welcome. Thank, thank you so much, Frederick, for 